As the sleek car pulled into the dusty village, young Oliver gazed out at the sprawling fields and modest homes. He had no idea this visit would challenge everything he believed about wealth and happiness. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tolaris. Charles Harrison stood in front of his full-length mirror, adjusting his expensive tie one last time. Today was special, not because of any business meeting, but because he had planned something different for his 10-year-old son, Oliver. The successful tech entrepreneur had noticed his son becoming increasingly spoiled, demanding the latest gadgets and throwing tantrums when he did not get his way. Oliver, are you ready? Charles called out. Walking down the marble hallway of their mansion, he found Oliver in the game room, eyes glued to his latest gaming console. Do we have to go? Oliver whined, not looking up from his screen. I was planning to play with my new PlayStation all weekend. Charles gently took the controller from his son's hands. Trust me, this will be more interesting than any video game. We are going to visit an old friend of mine. The drive was long, and Oliver spent most of it sulking in the back seat of their luxury SUV. As they left the city behind, concrete buildings gave way to open fields and scattered farmhouses. The smooth highway transformed into a bumpy country road, making Oliver bounce in his seat. Are we lost? Oliver asked, finally looking up from his phone as they turned onto a dirt path. Charles smiled. No, we are almost there. See that red farmhouse? That is where my friend Thomas lives. The farmhouse came into view, a modest two-story building with peeling paint and a wraparound porch. Chickens pecked at the ground freely and a worn pickup truck sat in the driveway. Oliver's nose wrinkled at the unfamiliar smell of livestock and fresh manure. As they pulled up, a man in overalls emerged from the barn, followed by a boy about Oliver's age. Thomas's weather-beaten face broke into a warm smile as he recognized the expensive car. Charles Harrison, I don't believe my eyes. Thomas walked over, wiping his hands on his clothes before extending them for a handshake. It has been what, 15 years? Charles stepped out, embracing his old friend despite the dust and dirt. Too long, Thomas, too long. This is my son, Oliver. Oliver stepped out cautiously, holding his nose slightly. Jack, Thomas's son, bounded over with the energy of a young puppy. Hi, I am Jack, he said, grinning widely. Want to see our new baby goats? They were born just last week. Before Oliver could protest, Jack had grabbed his hand and was pulling him toward the barn. Charles watched in amusement as his perfectly groomed son was led away by the enthusiastic farm boy. They will be fine, Thomas assured, noticing Charles's concerned look. Jack knows his way around here better than anyone. Come on in. Sarah has just made some fresh lemonade. As they settled on the porch with their drinks, the sound of children's laughter drifted from the barn. Charles smiled, realizing that perhaps this weekend would work out better than he had planned. The afternoon sun cast long shadows across the farmyard as Jack showed Oliver around his world. In the barn, Oliver stood wide-eyed as Jack confidently picked up a baby goat, cradling it in his arms. Want a holder? Jack offered. This one is called Daisy. She is the friendliest. Oliver hesitated, his hands hovering uncertainly. Back home, the closest he had come to animals was watching nature documentaries on their giant TV screen. I don't want to hurt her, he admitted. You won't, Jack assured him, carefully transferring the tiny goat into Oliver's arms. The warmth of the small creature and its gentle bleeding made Oliver break into a surprised smile. See, she likes you. As the afternoon progressed, Oliver discovered a world he had never known existed. Jack introduced him to each animal like they were old friends. The mother hens protecting their chicks, the old farm dog named Max who followed them everywhere, and the pair of horses grazing in the pasture. Do you want to collect eggs? Jack asked, grabbing a basket from a hook. We need to do it before sunset. Oliver followed Jack into the chicken coop, amazed at how the other boy fearlessly reached under the hens to retrieve the warm eggs. After some encouragement, Oliver tried it himself, his heart racing as his fingers touched the smooth shell of an egg. I did it, he exclaimed, carefully placing his first egg in the basket. Jack grinned, proud of his new friend's achievement. As the day grew warmer, Jack led Oliver to a creek that ran through the property. The water sparkled invitingly, and without hesitation, Jack kicked off his shoes and jumped in. Oliver stood on the bank, thinking about his designer clothes and what his father would say. Come on, Jack called out. The water is perfect. Making a decision, Oliver pulled off his shoes and socks. 
The cool water felt incredible against his feet, and soon both boys were splashing and laughing, their clothes soaked, but their spirits soaring. When hunger called them back to the house, they found a simple but abundant lunch spread out on the wooden table under a large oak tree. Fresh bread, still warm from the oven, homemade jam, and eggs they had collected earlier made up the feast. This is the best sandwich I have ever had, Oliver declared, taking another big bite. He did not even mind that his hands were dirty or that he was sitting on a rough wooden bench instead of the cushioned chairs at home. As evening approached, Jack showed Oliver how to feed the animals. They carried buckets of feed, working together to ensure every creature was taken care of. Oliver found himself enjoying the responsibility, understanding for the first time what it meant to be needed. That night, exhausted but happy, the boys lay on a blanket in the backyard, looking up at the stars. The sky was clearer than anything Oliver had ever seen in the city, with thousands of twinkling lights spreading across the darkness. Do you do this every night? Oliver asked in wonder. Most nights, Jack replied. Don't you see the stars from your house? Oliver thought about his room with its automatic blinds and artificial mood lighting. Not like this, he said softly. Never like this. Sunday afternoon arrived too quickly for Oliver's liking. As Charles loaded their bags into the car, Oliver lingered on the porch, watching Jack chase Max around the yard one last time. The weekend had passed in a blur of adventures and discoveries, each moment adding to Oliver's growing realization that life could be different, simpler yet somehow fuller. Time to go, son, Charles called out, checking his expensive watch. The gesture reminded Oliver of how his father was always conscious of time, always rushing to the next appointment or meeting. After a final goodbye filled with promises to visit again soon, they began their journey back to the city. Charles glanced at his son through the rearview mirror, noticing how Oliver kept turning to look back at the farmhouse until it disappeared from view. So, Charles began, confident his plan had worked, now you have seen how people with less money live. What did you think? Oliver did not answer immediately. He was lost in thought, remembering the warmth of the sun on his face as he and Jack had run through the cornfields, the taste of freshly picked strawberries, and the gentle sounds of the farm at night. Father, Oliver finally said, his voice thoughtful. I don't think they are poor at all. Charles almost missed a turn, surprised by his son's response. What do you mean? You saw their house? They don't even have air conditioning in every room. And did you notice their clothes? But they have so many other things, Oliver insisted, sitting forward in his seat. Jack knows how to take care of animals, grow food, and fix things. I don't know how to do any of that. Charles listened as his son continued, each word challenging his long-held beliefs about success and happiness. Their dinner table is always full of people talking and laughing, Oliver went on. At home, we eat in different rooms because you are on business calls, and I am usually watching videos on my tablet. The boys' observations struck a chord in Charles's heart. When was the last time they had shared a meal as a family without electronic devices? And father, Oliver added, his voice growing more animated, they don't need a swimming pool because they have that beautiful creek. They don't need fancy games because they have real adventures every day. Even their dog seems happier than our buddy, who spends most of his time alone in the backyard. Did you notice how Jack's whole family works together? Oliver asked. They all help each other. At home, we have staff for everything. I don't even know how to make my own bed. The truth in his son's words made Charles's throat tight. He had wanted to teach Oliver about being grateful for their wealth, but instead, Oliver was teaching him about the wealth they had lost in pursuing financial success. As they approached the city limits, the towering buildings casting long shadows over their car, Oliver made one final observation that would change their lives forever. I think we are the ones who are missing out, Father. We have lots of things, but they have something better. They have each other. The weeks following their visit to Thomas's farm brought subtle but significant changes to the Harrison household. Charles found himself thinking about Oliver's words repeatedly, especially during long board meetings, when his mind would drift to the peaceful scenes they had witnessed at the farm. Over the next few months, their backyard transformed. A section of the perfect lawn gave way to raised garden beds. Charles began taking him for morning walks with Oliver, using this time to really talk with his son. Their weekend routine changed too. Instead of separate activities, they started spending time together. The transformation was not just in their backyard or daily routines, it was in their hearts. 
they had learned that sometimes the simplest things in life, a homegrown meal, a star-filled sky, or a shared moment between father and son were the most valuable treasures of all. If you enjoyed this story, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more inspiring tales. Until next time, goodbye.